Charles Darwin. His theory predicted that all organisms originated from a single common ancestor and evolved through a process of very slow mutation and natural selection. Darwin himself, however, admitted that he couldn't explain the sudden appearance on Earth of the first complex animal group some 541 million years ago. Their presence can be confirmed by the following fossils. But where are their ancestors? They seem to have come from nowhere. Such complex life forms couldn't generate through a random mutation within a short time frame. They need a developed and coherent DNA code and a far longer biological time frame. Francis Crick, molecular biologist and co-discoverer of DNA. The basic compound of DNA are the four chemical subunits called the bases, which when paired, form nucleotides. These nucleotides function just like the zero and one of the binary code when using computers. The sequence of these nucleotides is like an instruction booklet to build the proteins that allow life. The molecular biologist, Leroy Hood, has also described DNA as a digital code. If a life form is to evolve into a more advanced one, it must change its code and create new, coherent information. The theory of evolution says that this has always happened by random mutations of DNA code. However, we have seen that DNA works like a computer program, and we know that if we try to randomly rewrite an operating system code, the system crashes. Radical mutations are not allowed. 8% of our genome is viral DNA. It has settled in our evolutionary line through infections during the last 100 million years and is still active to regulate some aspects of our lives. Since living things need a specific order in DNA, what formation process may have taken place? Over the last century, a number of mathematicians and physicists, such as the great John von Neumann, have been skeptical of the idea that life creation could occur through random chance. They did not believe that on its own, random mutation was capable of generating new and coherent instructions for viable organisms. It is a matter of probability. Let's consider four aces, randomly shuffled. If we want to draw the ace of hearts, we will have one chance in four of picking the right card through random selection. With 52 cards, the probability of drawing the ace of hearts will drop to one in 52. But if we want to draw all the cards of the same deck, in this precise sequence, the odds will drop to one in 80 million, 700,000, trillion, 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 trillion. A number to the power of 67, a figure greater than the number of all planets in the universe. Since the time of the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago, when an attempt was made every second to pick that sequence of cards randomly, the calculation would continue today and for millions of years to come. Human DNA is not 52, but 3 billion nucleotides, which need to be combined in a very specific sequence to form genes. From a mathematical perspective, a random origin of life is simply not plausible. It would be like throwing thousands of cards, expecting them to fall into specific sequences. Even if we started at the time of the Earth's formation, we would have the time to test only a tiny fraction of the possible combinations. Let's now consider the concept of entropy. Entropy is the second law of thermodynamics. It is the principle that systems spontaneously evolve from a state of equilibrium to a disordered one. In nature, we can observe the process of continuous loss of genetic information, a manifestation of entropy. However, the DNA within each cell will continuously copy and paste itself throughout an organism's lifespan. 
Surprisingly, the cell possesses mechanisms which make decisions and which can recognize and repair data losses in the DNA code. In the lifetime of a human being, a body's DNA will be copied 10 million billion times and with minimal errors. So, where is this containment process against entropy coming from? Moving on to human evolution, we see how primates remained almost unchanged for many millions of years. Yet in a short genetic time, the hominins appear to have undergone radical changes. Between the species Australopithecus and Homo habilis, the increase in brain capacity is dramatic and disproportionate when measured on a genetic timeline. Donald Johansson, the discoverer of the Australopithecus, Lucy, admits that we still have no evidence for human ancestry prior to Homo habilis. Ian Tattersall of the American Museum of Natural History in New York says that the origin of language and symbolic capacity in Homo sapiens remains unexplained. The human genome acquires 300 new genes not present in monkeys. Of these, 90% are genes which have mutated during duplication. The origins of the other 10% of our genes remain a mystery. Catherine Pollard the leading researcher at the Glass Institute in San Francisco discovered in 2005 a small region of 180 nucleotides responsible for our brain development. These regions showed 18 mutations within an inexplicable short time frame. It was almost unchanged for 310 million years. In our branching from our primate ancestor, a process occurred called Robertsonian translocation. That process consists of two ancestral chromosomes fusing to form human chromosome number two. Translocations, more often than not, lead to pathologies because during diffusion, genes can lose parts of themselves and no longer function as they should. In rare cases when they merge into neutral areas, the subject can still be healthy but will have risk in reproduction. Apes have 48 chromosomes, humans 46. Let us assume that one of our ancestors for a rare case was born with 47 chromosomes and was healthy. Another rare case subject with 47 chromosomes happened to be born and of the opposite sex. Such a double event would be extremely rare. Assuming it happened, the two subjects would now have to meet. If this occurs, they must now have intercourse. And at that point, if fertilization occurs, there will still be 36 possibilities of genetic combination, of which only one will lead to the embryo with 46 chromosomes. The odds of success are about 1 in 7 billion, and to stabilize the new genetic structure and number, identical pairings would be needed. One side of science says that there is an overwhelming lack of evidence for a random chromosome 2 fusion. The area where the two ape chromosomes would have merged for human chromosome number 2 has an important functional feature called promoter inside a highly expressed gene. It is not an accident of evolution. Even assuming a translocation happened in the case of human origins, a founding group of multiple subjects would have been necessary in order to stabilize the species. But since this event is extremely improbable, one wonders how this event could have happened several times, in the same place on Earth, and within the same subject's lifespans. What is the nature of these phenomena? A number of eminent scientists have put forward the theory of an alien presence. In 2017, an anomalous interstellar object was detected. Observatories tracked its movement, noting that the object followed an unusual trajectory as it crossed our solar system. Ami Loeb, astrophysicist and director at Harvard's Department of Astronomy, 
put forward the theory that the object could be a probe sent by intelligent life in the universe. Francis Crick, Nobel Prize winner and co-discoverer of DNA, argued for the theory of panspermia, the seeding of our galaxy with the genetic coding for conscious intelligent life. Could it explain the appearance of DNA on planet Earth? In his book, Life Itself, Crick proposed that the primordial life form may have arrived on Earth in the ancient past, sent by a more advanced civilization. Significant figures in science, such as Stephen Hawking, Carl Sagan, Michio Kaku, and many others have put forward similar extraterrestrial hypotheses. If random mutation is indeed insufficient to explain these events in our biological history, just how might life on Earth have arrived and evolved?
Thank you for watching The Fifth Kind. Please check out our official website at fifthkind.tv where you can sign up to receive our latest newsletters, stories, and select featured content that is only available on alternative platforms. If you like the music in this video, check out tracksforpro.com to find more information about using the music tracks and soundscapes for your own video projects. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.